do a little polishing on our blank before we cut the teeth. We want to get this smooth so we uh, don't have any ridges in it or anything. The smoother the better. Um, we'll give a better finish on our final product. Let's see, let's zoom in a little bit. Alright, I got uh, silicon carbide and a little oil. Basically mix it up, make a little paste. I'm going to use a popsicle stick. See how this works. At this point, if you wanted a round bottom in your form, now's the time to take a stone, a fine stone, and you can round the very end of this off on both sides. That'll give you your round bottom. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm not going to bore you anymore with that. I might touch it up a little we'll get bit. over to the little horizontal mill. I think I'm going to use that to cut the teeth over out. Over here at the little horizontal mill, let me show you this as best I can, what I was thinking. And, yeah, you might say, <laughs> there he goes thinking again. I had a hard time finding a, a dividing head that would fit for what I was thinking of doing on here and didn't really want to spend a bunch of money until I figured some things out with this with using this mill so I took an old watchmaker's lathe bed that I had and I had a bunch of other stuff I had these two headstocks so what um, what the headstocks allow me to do is if I if I wanted to put a collet in here in the headstock that's the tail then they would both spin um, and then it would give a lot more rigidity but uh, for what we're doing here we're gonna cut the teeth out on this uh, blank that we made for the cutter I've got a little three jaw chuck in here to hold the arbor and we're gonna set this up then I had made some dividing plates. You can see this quick little way that I did this with a bunch of holes and just something to index it. Um, index plates. But I made a, a whole bunch of these for a bunch of different things that I was doing or planning on doing. Uh, neat little Atlas horizontal mill. Uh, kind of fun to use. This is nice and slow, yep. this uh, power feed here. Um, the spindle will turn at a nice slow RPM. I think I'm going to be right around 61, uh, 61 RPM plus a real slow uh, feed. Zoom in a little bit. First thing I want to do is center my blade. Now this tail stock I had, or this head stock, whatever, I have a, a center in there. We'll just center that up. Okay, well, okay what we'll good. do from centering that is we'll zero out the, uh, the indicator here. Okay, and then the calculation.
for offsetting this tooth form, or this tooth, is the diameter, the diameter of the blank, which we have at, it's 25.06 millimeter. times 0.122 so we have 25.06 times 0.122 equals 3.05 millimeter is how I want to offset the blade and what that will do is give me a radial rake for my cutter. If I draw that out real quick, we'll have a, let's pretend this is our tooth, we're gonna have a, this will be the radial rake here. So by offsetting the cutter that three millimeter right here is gonna give us that radial rake. We'll see it when it's done. Okay, now we're centered up. So we get a approximately a seven degree radial rake by moving it over um, three millimeter. So let's just move it over three. lock that down and we're locked in that direction drop this back down <clears throat> now this is going to give us what I've got it set up for is uh, 16 divisions so this will give us 16 teeth which might be kind of interesting we'll see how that performs okay now all I need to do is make a couple of test cuts in here and make sure that I'm getting past my form on the cutter blank and I'm gonna go a little bit deeper That'll give me some room for chips and things like that. So we'll just make a couple uh, test cuts uh, by eyeball. We can figure all this out and go from there. Now this machine is, is okay. It's not uh, extremely accurate or anything, uh, but it does work. It'll work really good for doing this. Got an old blade in there that I should probably replace for doing this, but I'll do that, worry about doing that later. Okay, we got those cut. That's always a good time to clean up around the shop when something like this is going nice and slow. So, um, I have to find something else to do while we cut the rest of it. What we'll do now is we're going to offset the blade 
even more. I'm going to shove it over this way. And cut deeper to cut the back side of that now, tooth. This is kind of uh, guesswork. I mean, all this, none of this has to be perfect because, as far as measurements, because um, you might want to cut a little deeper in here for your, um, because your tooth form is is larger and then your all, all your adjustments will be made off of that so we're gonna eyeball it once again take a couple of test cuts and go from there I can see I want to go over further yet down just a little bit more I think that looks good. Um, it might be hard to see. Uh, might be hard to see here. But all of this is uh, possibly going to cause friction. I mean, we're, we're just making this cutter with a scooping action. It isn't going to have any back cut on top of here. So this tooth I want to I want to cut these all these teeth and just leave you know a little bit up here for strength on the tip. The rest of it can be cut so away. I think we're set. Um, and we'll start cutting the rest of them. All right, that was moved over 9.65 millimeter. We'll just jot that down for future reference. Uh, as far as depth, uh, I don't know. So, here we go. Okay. We'll look at that a little closer here under the microscope and see what's going on. Well, it doesn't look too bad. Uh, might need to get me a new saw blade. But, I think it's going to work. We'll see. A little bit of burr is coming up on here. At the very tips. And on that one side. What I'm going to end up doing now is I'll take it out of here. I'm going to clean it and then I'm going to heat it, heat treat it. Uh, not necessarily heat treat it, but harden it. I'm just going to harden it. I'm not going to tamper it. And we'll see how it works. That'll be on the next video. Cutting the actual pinion.